welcome to what is this the third week of january listen time is flying it's flying let's just let's just put it out there let's just put it out there it's also a holiday so i'm excited so as you can see i'm kind of in more leisure wear but it's also a dress i love this dress i wear church i wear daytime it's perfect but I am picking up my glasses and then we're gonna go get our coffee set up so we can have pretty good coffee this morning. Um, so I wanted to see if you wanted to help me choose my glasses. I'm excited. We're gonna choose some glasses um, and then we're gonna go make some coffee and then we're gonna hop into the word and spend some time together. Okay? Okay. Okay, so the first pair is like a taupey colored. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's not gray, it's a taupe. It has like a rose gold hinge to it. Let's see. But it brings out the gray in the outfit. I love these glasses. I love the shape of them. They're very lightweight. I like these a lot. And my prescription has not changed really in years, guys. So I just be wearing glasses. I don't even go and see the little doctor people. So this is fun. It's yes this is fun i think i like this more with like a structured look i think because of the structure of the top of them i like it though these are fun they're all metal um which is which is nice there's no plastic to these at all um except for the little nose pads and it's a beautiful blue color again lightweight um i think these i got from firmo if i'm not mistaken i think i got these from firmo I like these a lot i like these a lot but it's a much brighter blue than the navy if that makes sense not that i think that your glasses have to be matchy matchy y'all because i'll wear glasses any color any pattern anytime it just depends on my mood and then these are my big ones and i typically wear these with like suits and just want me to punch it up a little bit so, what do you think? I think, guys, I think it's the first pair. Oh, yeah. Yep, we're going to do the first pair. Okay, that's it. Glasses chosen. Thanks so much. Even though you kind of weren't here, but you are here because we're faith besties. <laughs> so, that reminds me. I'm going to have to do a real intro, but I'm going to do the real intro after we make coffee because... Who wants to really have full conversations before coffee is in your system? Not me. Let's go make some coffee. Wait, as I was putting up my glasses, I saw a different pair that I didn't see the first time we were looking. And I just want to try them on really quick. And these are actually blue and pink. They have like a ombre effect. Pretty cool. I'm going to this on really quick because I didn't remember. Oh, these are cute. These are cute, guys. I like these. I like these. I think we're going to go with these. And these are super, super lightweight. Super lightweight. And these are from Z Lul. So, yeah. I think I'm going to wear these. I like the other ones. I love the other ones. But I've worn those, like, plenty of times. I actually didn't even remember I had these glasses. I probably haven't worn these more than once. So, we're going to go with these. And it's, it's actually navy. They're navy on the top and they're like this little light pink on the bottom. So I think it's the perfect little touch for a day when I want to be kind of matchy. Okay. So yes, now let's go get coffee because I need to talk. And to talk, I need coffee. Bye. Okay, so we made it downstairs. So let's make a little coffee together. And you've already seen me doing the cold brew either right before this, but I had to do it another day, obviously. So this is a Cafe Mexicano. It's a Mexican blend. It's a delicate body mild flavor with fruit and chocolate notes, which if you've ever had Mexican hot chocolate or Mexican chocolate, then you know that These, this is typical. It also typically has a little spice to it, but of course this doesn't. So again, found this at TJ Maxx. So I'm super excited to try this. Have never tried it before. So we're gonna be trying it together. So I'm excited. Okay, so I made the We're gonna turn it. I'm actually gonna just try the coffee itself first, just to see. 
I like it. Okay, that's relatively smooth. We are doing unsweetened vanilla almond milk. Robbie actually got almond milk instead of oat milk. He forgot that I prefer oat milk. Oh no, I take that back, that's not it. He didn't forget. He told me that he couldn't find it. So let me correct that before he watches this and like, that's not what I said. He couldn't find it where he was, so. Ooh. And y'all, I've been holding on to the last of this brown sugar syrup. So I'm gonna put a little bit in here. Stir it. That's really good. Actually, what is for resting because <laughs> why not? That's yummy. That is so yummy. I don't even have to put my creamer in. I got out my non-dairy oat creamer, the brown sugar flavor from Trader Joe's, just in case I needed a little bit. I don't need anything in this. This is really, really good coffee. So again, I was just on for coffee. We're gonna do this. So, yay. I'm going to sip this down a little bit and I'm going to meet you in the room where we can talk about the word. See you in a sec. Okay, so we're back and now we're gonna chat because, duh. So let's do formal introductions. If you're new here, I'm Petra. If you're not new here, then you already know that I'm your faith bestie. That means that I am called by God, as far as I know, to help equip you with the tools to be well. And so that means that we talk about all things and we start with faith, right? Because we're merging our faith and wellness. Faith should be the foundation of your life and a holistically well life. And so we start each week with pretty good coffee. And that just means that we drink the coffee, we read the word, we chop it up a bit, and then we get into our week, right? Because our faith girl's on the go. So we don't spend tons of time, but we spend time. And we make sure that it is quality time every time. So we've already done the coffee. I talked to you a little bit about what I had it's from Cafe uh, Mexicano, I think. It's their Mexican blend. It has fruity and chocolate notes in it. It's really, really good. I did not have to add any creamer. I did change my cup because I need to run out. So it's not the glass cup from earlier, um, but it's delicious. I used the last bit of my brown sugar syrup that I've been, that I had made myself. And yeah, it was the perfect compliment, the perfect, perfect compliment. And if you think about it, it makes sense because brown sugar and fruit, it's like caramelized fruit. It's so delicious. Um, or it's like caramel and chocolate. So it's it's really, really good. So um, I also added the unsweetened vanilla almond milk. And that's it, I think. I don't think I added anything else. I'm pretty sure I didn't because I didn't add a creamer. Um, so if you're interested in trying that out, I got it from TJ Maxx. I'm sure that you can find it in on Amazon or in another store. I don't know who the retailers are. But if I can find it, I will link the Amazon link below for you. Oh yeah. Mm hmm. My day is gonna be just fine, just fine. I'm excited about that. So I want to go ahead and read the word. I'm looking at my computer screen. So if you see me looking over here, that's what's happening because I don't want to have it in front of my face because you guys are on my phone. So if I move the computer over here, you'll. Anyways, I'm talking too much. We're gonna do Galatians four verses eight through nine, the CSB version, Galatians four verses eight through nine, the CSB version. And it says, but in the past, since you didn't know God, you were enslaved to things that by nature are not God's. But now since you know God or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elements? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again. This is Galatians 4 verses 8 through 9, the CSB version. And it says, but in the past, since you didn't know God, you were enslaved to things that by nature are not God's. 
But now since you know God or rather have become known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elements? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? And I thought that this was a wonderful verse to start the week out with, but more importantly, to we're still in the very beginning of 2024. And so it's a really good verse to start a year with because it's a reminder that as you have developed your relationship with God, it doesn't mean that those old forces, those old habits, those old temptations, those old, those old things that you have made to be idols, that they're not going to still pop up. However, you have to have the fortitude to say, I'm not going back to that. I'm not going to be enslaved to my old ways. I'm not going to live in sin. I'm not going to um, succumb to my own fleshly desires. I understand that there is no other God before God, but anything that takes my attention away from him is an idol. And I have set it up as a God, right? And so I've become enslaved to it. I have become tied to it, bound to it in the way that I am supposed to be bound to God and his word. And so it's saying you, you didn't know him. So that's why you were all in that. But now you know God and you're known by him. You have relationship with him. Why would you go back to the life without life? Why would you go back to this season where you're governed by weak and worthless things, weak and worthless things? Do you want to be enslaved all over again? It's like saying, hey, you have an opportunity to choose. Do you want to live in light and love? Do you want to have a purposeful and prosperous life? Do you want to be used by God? Do you want to see the fulfillment of his call and his purpose on your life? Do you want that? Or do you want to go back to when you're just living and going through the motions? Do you want to go back to... um, feeling as though you're never going to be fulfilled? Do you want to go back to always varying with the wind when something new and shiny comes? You want that. You're always chasing after the thing. Do you want to be enslaved to your fleshly desires and your ego? Do you want to be enslaved to those things that you created idols out of? Do you want to be a slave to material things? I dare say that you don't. And so this is an admonishment. And this was actually sent um, to the Church of Galatia. But for even us in this time, it is a good reminder. Now that you know God and are known by him, as in you have a relationship with him, focus on your relationship with God and nurturing that and keeping yourself away from those things that were addictions and obsessions for you before. Keep yourself away from those things that you have created false altars to. Keep yourself away from anything that caused you to deviate from your relationship with God and from the word of God. Those things mean you no good. They will enslave you. They will become your master. And when they become your master, the expectation is that you will produce for them, that you will work for them. And if you're producing and working for sin, you're creating and begetting more sin. And that's not what we're called to. We're called to effectuate God's glory in the earth, but you cannot do both. You cannot serve two masters, the word says. You cannot serve two masters. And the word also wants us to remember that we cannot be lukewarm. He spits us out of his mouth if he finds us to be lukewarm. He'd rather that we be hot or cold, either for him or against him. You cannot serve two masters. And so if we're called to effectuate glory in the earth for God, if we believe and we say that we are saved and that we are called according to his purpose and his will, that we have to begin to act like that. We have to begin to move like that. We cannot go back to our former selves, our former ways, our former lives, our former relationships. Everything has to move forward in a forward trajectory as though we're called to God alone. Called to God alone. That's literally it. So that's all I want to talk about. I'm not going to hold you too long because Obviously, I know that this is a holiday. I know y'all got things that y'all want to get done today before we have to jump into the real work week. So that's it. I hope that you hold Galatians 4 verse 8 through 9 in your heart today. I hope that you have some really, 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 really good coffee because this is really... Y'all tired of drunk almost all of it? 
Oh, March 23rd as well. We have the Last Supper experience. It is happening the week before Good Friday. So make sure you get your tickets at heyprettylife.com. This is going to be an intimate gathering of good food, teaching, prayer, worship, and studying of Mark 14 as we prepare for Resurrection Weekend. It's going to be bomb. So get your tickets, heyprettylife.com. And that's it. I'm going. I love y'all. Bye. Bye.